Hello, oracles. Well, today we saw a little green coming back to Tesla. It's very nice to see this. Now, over the weekend, we got a great video coming out from Tesla showing Optimus and the progress that they have made. Obviously, Wall Street does not care about this whatsoever. We saw the stock price pull back significantly to start the day, and then we recovered a little bit as the day went on. So why is this a good thing for retail investors that Wall Street does not understand what the implications of Optimus are? We'll get into all of that, some of the other macro environment situations we have going on that could play into the stock price over the next year. We'll discuss all of that in just a minute. All right, so looking at the charts today, again, up just under 1%, closing at 246.99 and pushing up about a third of a percent after hours at the time of this recording. So again, RSI right here at 44. We've seen it in the past kind of coming down. Maybe we bounce back up and come up to the overbought range. So just paying attention to where we're moving here, looking at gaps, we do have a gap above us to 262.46. Again, above that is the 289.52. Below us, we have this gap down to 217.58. So the big thing to pay attention to this week as we play on are going to be the production and delivery numbers that we're going to be seeing next Monday. So next Monday, we're going to be getting that. I will be doing a live stream for that. So typically in the past, they have come out around 11 a.m. Eastern time. So I'm going to probably come on live around 10 to 1030 the market will be open at that time. So I don't know if that's going to change when Tesla is going to make that announcement. I will be ready to go all morning long. So if it comes out before then, I will jump on for you guys. So just pay attention. I'm not going to know for sure until we get there. But that right now, we are seeing consensus numbers coming in around the 460,000 delivery mark. I'm going to be updating my numbers and putting out a video for you guys this weekend about that. But we've already been given information from Elon at the Q2 earnings call to expect lower production numbers because they had the production lines for the Model 3 shut down over in Shanghai. We also heard about Austin having their lines shut down as they're doing upgrades. They're working on the Model Y, getting the Cybertruck up and running. So lots of downtime for production going on this quarter. So is that going to affect the deliveries as well? Maybe we end up seeing production and delivery gap be a lot closer than previous. Maybe we're not going to be seeing a number bigger than Q2. Right now, the market is pricing in a number that's lower than Q2. So if they do come out and beat Q2, I think that's going to be a massive win for Tesla. Now, we do have Gary Black posting out, EV Volumes, a credible third-party trade source, has posted a Tesla third quarter deliveries estimate of 480000 versus 466,000 in Q2 with detail below. This estimate is much higher than Troy Tesla-like and my own Q3 delivery estimates and reflects no change in China for Q3 versus Q2, which is at odds with China Weekly Insurance Registrations data. And the breakdown reasoning for this is supporting verbiage from EV volumes. Quote, we expect September deliveries to reach 193,000 units thus giving the full Q3 2023 of 480,000 units, July of 119,000, August of 168, September of 193. 193,000 units is not a record as both June and March were above 200,000 units. September 2022 had 190,000 deliveries, so we are conservatively expecting deliveries flat plus 1% year over year. This is mainly because Model 3 is currently being upgraded to facelift version and production was shut down for the upgrades. This may have had an implication on deliveries that is hard to measure. Also, some Model 3 intenders wait to get the new generation. An interesting milestone was shared by Tesla on the 17th of September when they produced their 5 millionth car. If assumed that this car is delivered within September, the September must be over 172,000 units or more than 460,000 units for Q3. So based upon their numbers and the 5 millionth vehicle being sold, they're somewhere between 460,000 and 480,000 for their estimates. So now again, I don't know what's going to happen. We do know that there's a lot of people that held out for the Model 3 Highland. We know that China did just release that to be able to get delivered over in China. So I don't know if they've been able to push all of these vehicles out since China approved that. That would be two weeks of heavy pushing to get these deliveries out. 
Truly don't know where that's going to end up playing in all of this, but we will see how this month ends. Again, we will discuss all of that next Monday. And now the real big news that we had gotten over the weekend that Wall Street did not price in today because it is a long ways out in Wall Street's eyes is the Optimus video. For those of you guys who did not see the Optimus video over on X, I will play it for you here. So as you guys can see, Tesla has made some massive progress with Optimus. You know, not to the point where it's going to be working in the factories yet, but knowing the progress it has made since we saw it back in the spring, this is huge. Just moving all along here, you know, as Tom Ju had said himself, Optimus is going to lower labor costs significantly. So that here, looking forward, we know that Tesla is going to be the first one to use these in their factories. So once Tesla is using this in their factories, they're going to be reducing labor costs significantly. Now they're going to start producing these for other people to use them to reduce labor costs as well. Now, all of a sudden, not only is Tesla reducing their costs of labor, but they're also going to be increasing revenues from Optimus. This is massive. So this is something we've all talked about. We kind of saw the groundwork being laid for all of this. We know the implications of what it could potentially bring in the future to a $10 trillion company for Tesla. But now we are seeing the actual progress of this being made. And now, of course, as was discussed as well, this here is running the exact same AI theory that we are using in FSD. It's all vision based, all like human learning. It's mentioned in Walter Isaacson's book, Elon Musk. And basically Elon hanging around with his son X is kind of relating that, hey, the humanoid robot is very much like a child learning how to walk at the same time. And they're kind of training it the same way. How does a human learn? Well, a human learns by experiencing things, going out, sensories, vision, sound, touch, all of that are how humans learn. That's how they are training FSD. That's how they are training Optimus. All the very same principles. So Tesla is actually solving real world, physical world AI. That is what is going to be changing the world as we move forward. Obviously, there's a lot of other AI that's out there when it comes to, you know, dialogue and texts and all of that. But when it comes to physical real world AI, Tesla is the one who's in the lead there for it. And so the big question that we asked at the beginning is, how is this good that Wall Street does not understand the implications of this Optimus video? Well, the reason it's good for retail investors is because some of us get to buy lower prices for a lot longer. So when you have to take a step back and let's be realistic about all of this, be realistic about where Tesla's at, where Wall Street's mindset is at, why the stock price is not moving on all of this, well, we've got Cybertruck's going to be released very soon. Rumor has it that we're going to be getting it sometime in October. But we have also been told by Elon that production is going to be very slow. Brand new production vehicle coming out. They're going to take their time to make sure that they do this right. They're going to have a lot of kinks that they need to work out as soon as they start ramping up production. It's going to be slow. The excitement, awesome. But as soon as we have Cybertruck coming out in October, and then we get to the end of the fourth quarter, and the numbers come in for Cybertruck, they could be disappointing for some people on Wall Street who had higher expectations. It's fine. We have already seen that when it came to Berlin and Austin. Production was a lot slower to begin with, and then ramp really took off after that. 
We're going to get the same scenario with the Cybertruck. FSD. We are most likely going to be getting version 12 within the next year. Version 12 is the one that we saw that Elon was using, which is full visual video-based AI that is not code-based, and that is going to be coming out. But we still need to get it regulated. That is something that most likely will not happen until after the elections of 2024. So we probably will not see anything from regulations on a national basis here in the U.S. until 2025 at the earliest. So now we look at other countries as China or Japan or somewhere in Europe. Are they going to come online sooner when it comes to FSD regulations? FSD is still not available in those areas yet, but we are hearing that they should be available by the end of this year. If that's the case, with all of the miles going with AI driving and the way version 12 has been going, it could pick it up very quickly so the learning curve is minimized. So while here in the U.S. we've been watching it grow for the last three, four years, when you put it into a place where it's going to be all visual AI based, it can pick it up very quickly. And so if Wall Street's not even going to be pricing in the Cybertruck or FSD, which are imminent coming out in the next year or two, then what is going to happen with Optimus, which is most likely not going to be hitting the factory floors to help Tesla out till probably 2026 or 2027 at the very earliest. So again, this is going to be huge in the future. This, as far as Elon is concerned, is going to be significantly larger than the EV market and all the EV revenues that are getting brought in. But the reality is we are not going to be seeing any revenues from these for probably minimum of five years. That's my guess. You guys can let us know in the comments below when you think we're going to start seeing some revenue generation from Optimus. My guess is, Five years from now, 2028 timeframe, 2029 is when we're going to start seeing Optimus actually start to get sold for some reasons or whatever in factories. So that's going to be my take on that one. But again, Wall Street's not going to price it in. We're going to see the exact same thing that we're seeing with FSD and Cybertruck. Once we get to that point, maybe after 2026, the entire economy recovers, we really start going into more of a bull market like we had seen from about 2011 to 2020. We may actually get some more of the excitement priced in versus what we're seeing now, because right now with the economy where we're at, we're seeing, hey, if we're not going to be seeing any revenues from this coming in in the next six months, we're not pricing it in. We don't care. And that's how Wall Street's looking at it. So perhaps when we get to 2026, maybe they price a little bit more in, but we're also going to have the compact car ramping at that time. FSD is most likely going to be regulated. Cybertruck will be at full ramp. We're going to have at least two new factories at that time as well. So there's going to be a lot changing over the next five years, which is most likely going to be pushing the stock price up. But because of the macro environment and because we're still seeing yields going up, this is crazy. I'm getting more and more money back from my CDs. I just signed up for one with a 5.6% return. And we have the Fed who may be raising interest rates again before the end of the year, which could end up pushing up those interest rate returns on the CDs to closer to 6%. When you get yields like that from basically risk-free money, equity dollars are not going to be as enticing because that means that equities will need to produce at least a 6% return minimum just to be able to compete with the CDs and treasuries that are out there. And if they're not going to be able to at least double that return, thinking you're going to need at least, you know, a 10 to 12% return on any equities that you purchase in a one year time frame, if you're not going to be seeing that potential, you're not buying those equities. That's why we are seeing such a hard time in the stock market right now, because you're getting such good returns from risk-free money in CDs and treasuries. And again, that is another reason why we could see a lot of great buying opportunities for equities. So this isn't going to stay forever. Eventually, we will go back to an equity bull market and run up like we did over the last 10 years, but it's going to take some time to get there. These are the times, not financial advice, but these are the times that you would want to buy more because this is where the kind of equity market is suppressed and you can buy more for less. We may still get a pullback. I still am anticipating a massive pullback next year in 2024, similar to what we have seen in 2022. I think we're going to be on that kind of cycle up and down and it could be a full year. So 2022 was down. We're going to see 2023 up and then we're going to see 2024 potentially go down again. Don't know how big it's going to be. Don't know if it's going to happen, but that is what I am foreseeing. And that's what I am planning for with my portfolio. 
For my portfolio, I tweaked my strategy over the weekend. I'm going to get it finalized and share it with you guys later this week as to what I'm doing with my dividends, with Tesla stock itself, with my cash, and how I'm getting myself prepared for what I think is going to be happening in 2024. So I'll get to that for you guys later. You guys can let me know what you thought about that Optimus video as well, what you think the implications are for the future of Tesla and the stock price itself. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Have a great one. Thank you.